I'm gonna be playing every single chest roll opening ever invented to see which one is actually the best. And for some reason, I decided to play every single one of these deranged openings until I actually won a game with it. Because... I hate my life. The Bong Cloud opening is the industry standard for trolling your opponent. Every single person on this planet Earth has played it. I did not at all have high hopes for winning a game with this opening. But against all odds, I managed to find a winning position and was up 5 full points of material in the end game. This was surely an easy win. All I had to do was defend against these two rooks and not get checkmated. The next game, my king was in trouble from the start, and it stayed that way until the middle game, where I managed to be winning by 9 whole points of material. Surely this was the easiest win of my career. All I had to do was trade off my pieces, and not get checked. And after two more losses, it wasn't long until I realized I was going to lose a lot of rating points today. In game 5, I liked my position a lot more. This was the turning point in the game. I was winning by 3 points of material, and this time I actually did trade off my pieces successfully, so I wouldn't get checkmated again. And finally, my opponent makes a fatal mistake, and I fully take advantage of him. And just like that, I won the game with the Bong Cloud opening. Wow, what a great achievement in my life. I'm so proud of my- the Transversite opening. Now, this is one of the more peculiar openings out there. The goal is pretty simple, to switch your king and queen's position on the chessboard. This not only wastes the first six to seven moves of the game, but it also ensures that you cannot castle later on. Now, my first game was going very well. I completed the opening and had a very comfortable position. I was even up at the end game. I mean, as long as I didn't get forked by this knight and lose my pieces, this should be an easy win. In the next game, I successfully transposed my king and queen and ended up getting a free knight. Now, if my king was where my queen was, this knight would not be free, which is probably the reason my opponent got confused and blundered his knight. This is probably the first good thing to ever come from this opening and the only good thing that will ever come from it. And my opponent gave me another free knight later in the game also. Thank you, sir, for your donations uh, for my efforts to win with these troll openings. I appreciate it. Now I was winning by six points of material. All I had to do was trade off my pieces, and surely this was an easy victory royale. And while the old me would have blundered mate, I was now a different animal but the same beast. Whatever that's supposed to mean. And I ended up winning the game. If you're wondering why I'm not saying anything in the actual recording, it's because I was playing in a library. Why was I recording in a library? The Crab Opening. This opening consists of pushing your pawns on the edge of the board first and developing pieces there instead of the center. This was unironically the opening I used to play as a wee lad when I was first learning the games of chess and how the pieces moved uh, before I knew that this was a horrible, terrible, disgusting opening, an abomination. In the game, I ended up with this weird situation where my king was trapped in the center of the board and this ended badly for me. The second game, I still had to use a crab opening, but this time I castled, so I did not get violently violated at high velocity. I was winning by two points in material, so as long as I didn't give up two pawns in the span of three seconds, I should be able to win this pretty easily. <laughs> luckily, my opponent's knight was trapped, and if they were smart, they would just let their knight die in peace. But luckily for me, they didn't realize my queen guarded my rook also, and sent their queen to meet their maker. You're rated 1241? More like, lost your queen 41. I was apparently so happy I won this game that I also took a drink of water, so that happened. I don't know why I'm telling you this, I'm definitely cutting this out of the video. The Disrespect Gambit. In this opening, you move your knights for the first 10 moves of the game, and that's about it. No developing, no taking control of the center, no normal opening principles, only moving your knights, and that's it. Now, I did do something similar to this in the past where I had to win a chess game without moving my pawns, so the only things you could move was basically your knights and I ended up losing over 100 rating points in that challenge. Now that's not good. The first game started off not too bad, besides the fact that I had the development of a struggling third world country, and my opponent had the development of a fully functioning Death Star pointing his laser straight at my forehead. However, I was up two points of material. My opponent had two bishops, and I had two rooks. These bishops were literally the bane of my existence and annoyed me to no end. Luckily, I got rid of my opponent's rook, but was now somehow down two points of material. But luckily, they only had one pawn. So all I had to do was trade my rook off for their dark squared bishop, and this would be an easy win, as long as I didn't trade off my rook for the wrong bishop like an absolute idiot. 
But the next game was a little weird since I guess my opponent got tired of my knights bouncing around and just took this one, so I had to take back before I reached 10 moves. I tried to attack his king side with all my might and it kind of worked out, but not really. Luckily, my opponent sacrifices his knight for no reason whatsoever, and after I trade queens, I was just winning in the end game. And after trading rooks, my opponent, overcome with the woes and worries of the world, resigns the game. The cow opening. This opening was popularized by Anna Kramling, I think, I'm not sure. I don't even know where I got the information from. You can play it as black or white and start off with moving your king and queen's pawn forward one square and bringing your knights out in this formation. Now, I'm pretty sure this isn't even meant to be a troll opening, but who in the right minds is even playing this seriously in a real chess game? Besides me. The game started off really well. I developed my pieces nicely, I castled, and everything was honestly going well. But if you know me, that means I was getting ready to throw the game completely out the window. And I did. My queen got violently forked, and if I was smart, I would have just moved my queen over here somewhere so that the knight couldn't take my rook. But I did not do that. And for some reason, my opponent does not take my rook and moves his queen instead. A few moves later, that same queen is murdered in the first degree. Yeah, I don't know what was going on in that game. Just typical everyday 1000 rated gameplay. The Scholar's Mate. And I'm certain you guys already know what I'm talking about, moving your queen and bishop out to attack the king, and winning the game in four quick moves. Or at least that's what's supposed to happen. And 99% of the time does not work at, at all. And you end up losing the game immediately. Now this only works at around 500 elo, and after realizing I would have to tilt all the way down to 500 to get one of these mates, I decided to just accept challenges from low-rated players. Now some may call this abuse of inexperienced chess players, I just call it inexperienced chess players being abused by me. After a bunch of these low-rated games with my opponents accidentally defending mates, I found the perfect candidate. e4, e5, perfectly normal moves. Knight f3, bishop c6, a free pawn being offered up on a golden platter. And like a fool, my opponent takes it. Queen g5, doing absolutely nothing for me. I meant to go queen g6. d3, completely giving up on his knight's hopes and dreams. But now I go queen f6, setting up this devastating attack. Will my opponent defend it? C3, a totally random and nonsensical pawn move, encapsulating these low-rated players perfectly in just one move. And finally, queen takes f2, check mate. Fool's mate. Now this is certified to be the fastest way to lose a chess game. You just start off with these two moves. All your opponent has to do now is put you in check with his queen, a very easy move to see, and his checkmate in two moves. So I have to start with these two moves no matter what, and win the game from there. In the first game, I did survive past the first two moves, but my king was very exposed and therefore got violently violated at high velocity. But the next game, I made it past the first two moves and had an okay position. I was up three points of material, so all I needed to do was trade off my pieces, and this was an easy win. As long as I didn't do something dumb like giving up a rook, luckily I got a draw, which I still counted as a win because if I lost any more ready points that day, the people in the library would be wondering why there was a computer shape hole in their ceiling. So well, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, comment down below. Please, sir, do a part two right now. And I might if this gets over one view.